where do I even start off? Um, 27 years of doing makeup. Uh, and doing that, I've kind of seen makeup go through different trends. And um, I, as a person, have evolved um, in my relationship with makeup. I mean, I know looking at some faces, I can't see everybody's faces, but looking at some faces, I'm going to assume that we're all kind of around the same age. In the no, I just had some water. Thank you. I just, I think that most of us are over 25 in here. Okay, let's see who's on. <laughs> but, um, yes, sorry, yes. sorry. Please, can everyone go on mute, please? Thank you. Thanks, guys. You're back on. I think it's, it's Nana and Grace's microphones that are on. Thank you, Nana. Thank you, Grace. So um, my relationship with makeup has changed, as I'm sure a lot of you as well. You know, we spend our younger years trying to look older. First of all, trying to get into the clubs. <laughs> Hanging out with all my older cousins, going out, being like, I'm not, I'm not 14, I'm not 15, I'm, I'm 18, I'm 21, I'm 25. And then they get to a point where you try to go backwards. You're like, ah, I'm almost 25. I don't like really, have I achieved all these things? And then you get to 30 and you're like, wow, do I see like, is my skin still the same? You know, and then you get to 40 and you're like, wow. Okay. And your skincare changes because your style also changes, your makeup changes, your hair changes, everything changes through the years. And it's just about learning how to be in harmony and owning, owning your look so that you still stay true to you and, how, and be happy with the way you look without also being too influenced by whatever the trends are at the time. Because let's be honest, you know, we go shopping, our friends, um, somebody is recommending this to us, another person is recommending that. We're, especially in this day and age, we're being bombarded by social media, um, everywhere we look, people are selling us something. Even though they're doing it very covertly, um, they're selling it to you somehow. And you think, oh, maybe I need to buy that. Maybe I need to buy this as well. Is it going to suit me? And you find that you probably end up having a lot of things that you've made bad investments in. Um, you've bought a lot of products that either don't suit your skin type, don't suit you coloring wise. And it's difficult um, to kind of navigate this very multimedia world right now where there are so many options. But a lot of the times, the options that are available are actually the same things that have always been available, but just repackaged. So it's not about buying the latest products. It's about buying whatever suits you and whatever you need the most for your skin type, for your coloring for your undertones your shades and for your lifestyle as well i mean one of the most important things i say to people is it has to work for you i can recommend or everyone can recommend a million different things for you to use saying oh use this this is great i tried this i tried that but does it fit into your lifestyle which is one of the things i like about what you said um nena about things fitting into your lifestyle you know i'm i'm a makeup artist but I hardly wear makeup on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think Oriton in here will also like testify. Yeah, I'm calling you out. Like as another makeup artist, um, you know, you'll find that a lot of the time they say that mechanics have the worst cars, builders have the worst houses, makeup artists and beauty therapists. We literally have the least time for ourselves because we're so tired of it. So as I said at the beginning, my relationship with makeup has changed. When I was 14, I was wearing, well, not when I was 14, but I started working when I was 14. So I was wearing so much makeup to make myself look older. And there's a lot of words that people use, um, like things like sophisticated, things like, oh, you're looking so classy, so sophisticated. But that's great when you're younger. But then as that gets older, certain words like that can also translate to it makes you look older it makes you look a little bit more stifled and we want to try and get away from looking too um, rigid because it's that rigidity in the makeup that makes us age. You want things that are going to make you look youthful. You want things that are going to make your skin 
look like they're glowing, like you're naturally radiant. And if you are wearing makeup, you still want to see yourself underneath the makeup. You don't want to look like you've got this mask on. And I think that's where a lot of us find problems when we get older, that makeup isn't sitting on our skin as well as we want it to. You can literally see that it's kind of there. You look like you're wearing a lot of makeup. So jumping into it, um, that's kind of where I'm going to help us to figure out acing the base, trying to figure out skin type in relationship to what the best products are for it as well. So if you guys have any specific questions, feel free to jump in with the questions. I will also check them. But what I'm going to do, because I do talk a lot, <laughs> once I start talking, I'm just like this, 100 miles an hour. Um, I'm going to start off with different sections to make it easier to follow. And then if you have any questions, feel free, jump in. I don't have any makeup on right now. And there's this glaring light above me. I'm not in my, I'm not in my house. And I've had to use my sister's house. <laughs> because you, you look great. Your skin looks great. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> no filters, because we're keeping it, we're keeping it real. This isn't, this isn't the gram. Okay, this is real life. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you some things, right? Because I live on the gram. So if any of you guys are on Instagram, you know, please feel free. And it's difficult sometimes because I have to navigate being an influencer, being a makeup artist, being a beauty therapist, and also just being a real person and going, has time for that. You know, you see some of these videos and you're like, really? With two children running to school, I'm gonna be doing that in the morning. Like seriously, it's not that it's not that serious. Life is not that serious. It's okay. I think the aim is to have a routine that you can get done in five minutes. You have a routine that can take you half an hour and then you have your full on out, going out, full beat face routine as well. So have different products for different occasions, but also maybe try and have products that you can make multi-versatile because not everybody wants to have like five to 10 different foundations. So sometimes, um, you can actually use the same product in different ways. Okay, so we're gonna, gonna start. <laughs> right, so first of all, where we're gonna start is with the skincare. Okay. Um, the whole thing of black don't crack, the reason why, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know, is like the reason why we say black don't crack is it is genetics, but a lot of the time the genetics come from <laughs> a lot of the time the genetics come from the fact that um darker skinned people tend to have more oils so everybody most of like my, my friends most of my family any of my clients one of the first questions when i ask them as a beauty therapist like what skin type do you have most people are gonna say i'm oily skin and a lot of the time we are oily skin as africans as black people melanated people we are oily but a lot of the time the shine that's coming through is not necessarily being oily skin. I'm actually dry skinned, but I shine a lot. <laughs> and that's not, it's not oils. And a lot of people confuse that. That's, that's what we call sebum. That is the skin, which is self-hydrating. We're self-lubricating. You know, our skin naturally produces enough oils for our skin to say supple. <laughs> supple. <laughs> but what we do is we get, Oil, shine, eat. Oh my God, gotta get rid of it. Get all these products. I mean, growing up, we used to use things like that Palmer's. In fact, there was times where we would get that Palmer's, which was like pure alcohol, because you have a spot and you will and you will feel like if you put something on your skin, it's not working unless you feel the burn. You're like, you want it to burn. You're like, yeah, it's working. It's killing those spots. Yeah, and your face will be on fire. You'd be like. But you thought it was good because we've been conditioned to feel like that shine is bad. But it has these negative knock-on effects because, you know, the Korean glass skin concept, a lot of black people can't get with it. We can't get with it because we're like, everything about the K-beauty is um, gentle products which are not going to damage or be too abrasive on the skin surface and layering several products they have like between seven to 12 steps of skincare and we're like you want me to apply all of that on my face 
and you know you're scrubbing your face and we're using the loafer on our body and it's, it's hard and we're scrubbing and we're also like scrubbing our face as well we are just going in hard because we have this concept that as a lot of black people i know we have this concept where we're like if you're not feeling it if you're not feeling the scrub if you're not feeling the burn it's not working and you want to feel like after you've done something you want to feel clean you're like yeah i feel clean meanwhile your skin is like burnt it's it's you know it's really bright red and you come out of the bath and you're glowing but meanwhile you look like a lobster because you've just you know literally scraped everything off so we have to kind of step back and say okay we're damaging the skin in so many ways that we don't even realize because by using products that have such high levels of alcohol in them, we're actually stripping the natural skin flora. We're, we're disturbing our natural skin balance. And the more you're using the higher alcohol content in products, the more you're actually making your body go into the overdrive because our body just wants to protect us. And if you're using alcohol on it, if you're stripping away the natural um, moisturizers that our body's providing, it's going to go into overdrive. So sometimes you end up getting into a position where you have oily dehydrated skin and a lot of people are like you can't be oily and dehydrated at the same time but you can because you'll be <laughs> your skin will be so shiny but your skin feels tight and if you and if you push it it it, it lines can come out it's not supple it just feels like it feels like this feels really tight and that's where the cracks do start appearing so hard so, yeah <laughs> i know so, i was gonna go into I'm, I'm curious absolutely let's so what do we do <laughs> so, so what we do is we build a um we build a routine that our own personal skins are happy with i mean really truly understanding what your skin type is not a case of just looking and saying okay i'm shiny therefore i'm oily okay my skin feels my skin feels dry therefore i'm tight you know you've got normal skin and you're like what exactly is normal skin who has normal skin you know combination skin they say oh when you've got like the t-zone but a lot of the time t-zone is that what about this area here you know what about all down here we're, we're breaking out everywhere we're not breaking out there you know and then also you have to look at your age because age also affects your skin type. I know I have been through three skin types to where I am now because hormonally, <laughs> hormonally, when you get to certain points in your life, your skin changes. Like I never had a single spot growing up until I started getting towards 30 and then I broke out. All hell broke loose all over my whole face and I was like, what is going on? Here, I've never had oily skin. I've always been um, normal to combination, well, normal to dry at that time. I was always normal to dry. Then I became oily combination. And then now I've gone back to normal dry. And it's like, I've gone through all these changes because hormonally my age, every single time, if you don't have like, if you don't suffer from acne when you're younger, you're more likely to suffer when you get to um, your thirties. And if it doesn't happen then, you're now likely to get it when you're getting closer to menopause. So there's a lot of different things that can change. Um, having babies, all sorts of things can actually change your skin type. So my recommendation, obviously I can't tell everybody right now what your skin type is, but you know, speak to an expert, go and actually get your skin um, when you can, go to a salon and get a therapist to actually really properly um, analyze your skin and tell you what your skin is like right now because you might be using the same products for years and it might just not be working for you. Or you might be using the wrong type of products for your needs right now. So, um, God, like, where do I even start with <laughs> the product? Um, one of the main products that I really, really, really um, urge most people need, when we're thinking about clear, smooth skin, a lot of the time, the reason why our skin isn't looking clear and smooth is because of the size of our pores. So the main aim is to try and reduce down the size of the pores because the drier your skin type is, the smaller your pores. If you have 
um, quite oily skin, you're gonna have quite open pores. So that's why a lot of the time we wanna be using alcohol products to shrink the pores, but try and stay away from the alcohol um, content and go for alternatives instead. Things like um, witch hazel are a <laughs> wonderful natural astringent, <laughs> I'm seeing some people laughing, a wonderful natural astringent, things like witch hazel. I, I beer to two extremes. I mix and match. Um, I'm playing around with glycolic acids and at the other end, I'm also playing around with um, glycerin and rose water. Good old glycerin and rose water from Boots. So cheap. And then on the other end, I'm dealing with like a Corsix two-in-one powerful, um, you know, astringent here. And you have to kind of learn how to balance your own skin types. Just analyze it. Sometimes, you know, I've started playing with retinols now as well um, to try and smooth off. I'm a huge fan of um, exfoliating the skin, either manual exfoliating, um, acid exfoliating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just daily, daily, weekly masks, everything. I was so scared before about retinols. Oh, you get rose water from Morocco? Yes, I, yes. I was so scared about retinols, but um, I'd heard how much it was the holy grail. And I used it, and now my mind is like, poof, like literally. Um, but you have to be really careful as well. In anything we had. You know, we had the session with Deja, and so we had like a deep dive on retinol. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, gosh. <laughs> so oh, we, went, we, went, we went in deep. We went in <laughs> the deep. The understanding <laughs> with her. Which I literally, because I, I always underestimate my skin. I'm always like, my skin is really tough. The same thing I say about my hair. I'm like, ah, oh, it's okay. It's just hair. It'll grow back. Oh, my skin can take it. So you'll read the instructions, and you'll do the exact opposite of what the instructions have told you to do. It will say, you know, start off. Um, twice a week, build up to three times a week and then go in five days. You know, I'll go in straight with five days a week because I'm like, eh, my skin is really strong. Exactly. <laughs> and then I'll end up, you know, totally just, I remember one day my skin was literally on fire. I had to go and grab Astral and start like slathering it all over my face. because it. And then I stood back and I said, okay, time to read the instructions. So having like um, products like the Niamicides, you can get like expensive ones you can yeah. get um affordable ones but this is like the revolution beauty niamicide that's going to really help with closing the pores i use that on a daily basis and then also the um hyaluronic acid as well which is going to help everybody to plump up the skin it's like really really important for every every skin type to keep your skin really well plumped and hydrated i absolutely recommend hyaluronic acid collagen products as well to just keep you nicely plump plump it up <laughs> and then a lot of people have started you know looking at products from brands like the ordinary from um inky list where they've broken it down into individual product individual ingredients like i just said and everybody's kind of doing mix and match but for me, I feel like a lot of the time, that's great if you know what you're doing, but it's really difficult sometimes to know what ingredients specifically you need, or are you getting the best um, use out of them, or are you blending the products together? Sunscreen is one of my major recommendations. I use this every day, and a lot of people kind of feel like, oh my gosh, it's SPF 110. Is, is that, does that say factor 110? Okay, you're, 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 that's not a joke. Okay, so I'm on another end of the spectrum on sun care because, but anyway, let's, let's, let's move on. But that's yeah. a second, that's a <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll explain the reason why with this factor 110, um, a lot of people are scared of um, sunscreens a lot of people are scared of sunscreens and especially a lot of darker skin people are very afraid um, of the casting that comes from sunscreens that they put it on and you can see the white cast on the skin there are brands like black girl sunscreen a lot of people feel that anything over an SPF 50 um, isn't going to really do much for you in terms of <laughs> in terms of the amount of time 
then it needs to be reapplied. But I love using things like the 110 because I also use this as a moisturizing base to um, mix in some of my pigments which I'll show you in a minute, because sometimes when you literally do not want to use foundations, you're just gonna mix your own BB cream, your own CC cream, because a lot of the time, let's be honest, you're gonna go to the high street shops and you see all these brands advertising BB cream and you're like, where's my shade? We're, we're never gonna find our shade properly. I know MAC has a couple now in darker skin tones, but I've always just recommended we can make it ourselves, and I'll show you guys how to um, how to do that as well. So what I was saying, sorry, backtracking, was I love products which already uh, have everything. Uh, exactly, that. exactly. Thank you, my dear. But that's oh. that's it's it's an important time, right? Because during it's, the cold, it's a good time to get oils into your routine. It's immense. I'm a huge fan of oils, and I recommend for a lot of my clients. Um, especially people with oily skin, they go oils on oily skin. I'll be like, yeah, you know, everybody needs hydration. And a lot of the time um, people are using products that do not hydrate them enough. They're using products to try and control the oils and they have alcohol in them. Whereas if you actually like a hungry child, if you feed it and it's full, then it doesn't eat anymore. So, it's not going to constantly be like yearning, saying, I need more, I need more. Okay, I'm lying because we all know children never stop eating if they're full anyway. <laughs> they're still going to eat. But, but if you feed your skin with the right level of oil, then it won't be working overtime to produce the oil that it feels it needs. And so it self regulates itself. So using an oil to stop your oils actually makes a lot of sense. And you can balance out your skin by just giving it what it needs. So, so I'm just conscious. Can I, can I just pause? I think I'm, I'm, I'm moderator a little bit. So we're getting some questions actually, because you touched on the base and I think all the skincare is, I'm just, I'm just flagging so that you know what we have to get to. Sorry, so we, can, yeah, we, can take, we can take that for a minute. Let's, let's take some questions. Let me but but you'll, you'll find your base because I can see we're working into, you know, there's getting <laughs> the skincare right. And then covered on to um, See, I think that, we've had some questions on foundation. What I'm gonna, I'm, I'm very, very cheeky, and she's gonna hate me for it. But I know Oriton is in here, and Tiffany is in here. <laughs> yeah, roll your eyes all you like. Roll your eyes all you like. Now, <laughs> um, I can already see Oriton mm -hmm. like um, answering a lot of stuff in there as well. So as I'm as I'm chatting, they have so much experience. Like you know, literally people around you that are obsessed with um, products themselves, you know, that know so much about products. It's amazing. So you guys can be answering the questions for me. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So you'll see there were some already on foundation and like dry skin foundation for black skin. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. But, so, all right. Good, good. Continue with right. your role then. So we are going to go. Um, so we're going to finish up with the skincare. Um, Finding like your right, your right mix of products, there are so many different levels and you cannot and you will never be able to have the best look when you're doing makeup if your skincare is not right. Acing your base is all about starting from the skin, starting from what you're actually putting it on. And I find that a lot of people are literally trying to cover flaws or hide things that they don't like rather than actually dealing with the problems at the direct source. So making sure that you are happy with your actual skin, then you're just using the makeup to enhance your actual beauty instead of using it as a mask to make yourself into somebody else. You know, because you're gonna take it off at night, so you need to look at yourself in the mirror and be happy. Um, I find that a lot of the time, even though I use really high-end products, I use um, drugstore products, I always end up going back to, you know, tried and trusted brands, stuff that already has all the ingredients mixed in it because we're not chemists and it's getting into a very dangerous territory where everybody's picking things from different brands because they've read here or they've read there that this product is good or that the skin needs this or the skin needs that. Unless you actually have a proper sit-down conversation with 
um, a specialist or go for a consultation and people really recommend things, yes, pick up on individual things or maybe look at your favorite products and look at what ingredients are inside your favorite products and think, okay, maybe I'll try this, maybe I'll try that. But you might find sometimes that you end up spending more money buying all the individual ingredients rather than what you would spend on if you had just bought one product that has it all inside. I'm not selling anything to you, but I'm just showing. Um, like the product here that you have, I love it, which is a hydration balm that's got all of the oils already inside it. That is amazing, the hydration balm. And, and you know that also has hyaluronic acid and it does. It has, it has it all inside. It's a power pack. Things like Ole, a lot of people yeah, love like when they say, what's your favorite cream? You were expecting me to come out with some really fancy pants in seven to five pound face moisturizer. And I'm like, oh, I always go back to this, the Ole Seven Signs of Aging, because it literally has everything inside it. So I went through the ingredients list. I looked at the ingredients inside this product because I know I like this product. So I looked at the ingredients and then I started picking off different ingredients from this product. I started buying them separately thinking, okay, my skin obviously likes this, my skin likes that, but maybe I need to add extra things that this product doesn't have into it. So it's about kind of mixing and matching and finding out what works for you. And sometimes you are going to go through a lot of products that um, didn't work for you because you're just kind of blindly walking through what other people have recommended so find what you actually like and find what your main concerns are kind of have a checklist of what your actual concerns are and do the research for what those specific concerns are rather than just kind of listening to other people saying oh this product's good that product's good what's good for you might not be good for somebody else right i'm going to quickly try and catch up with some questions I can feed you the questions. So we oh, yeah. have some of the questions that we've had so far. So the first one came on actually foundation because I think a lot of us have come here with sort of the makeup, how do I get it right? And I know when I think about Ace in my base, when we start to move on from skincare to makeup, I think, okay, I've heard there's primer, there's um, you, I don't know, foundation, there's concealer, there's bronzer. Someone asked what's the difference between bronzer and highlighter. There's BB creams. There, there are so many different things. Uh -huh. Setting lotions. If you could just help us just navigate what is a good sort of base set, I guess, for every day. And then we can go on to what makes nighttime. Mm -hmm. But let's focus on every day because that's what we're... Yeah. So before I even before I even start with any of um, my makeup, I always need to make sure that my base is right because a lot of people are like, oh, yeah. primer, um, what's the difference between a primer and a mattifier? And there is a difference. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, you will see some products say mattifying primer. So if it just says primer, it is just a primer. If it just says mattifier, it is just a mattifier. So you want to make sure it's a mattifying primer if that's what you want, because not everybody wants a mattifying effect. Some people still want to have a dewy glow. So understanding what um, you actually want as the final result of your makeup, what's the final look that you want, will determine what products you're actually going to use as your base. But before you start putting on anything, you need to make sure that you layer up your skincare first. So yeah, we're doing the um, we're doing the, the face wash, the cleanser, toner, moisturizer. We may have to make sure that we actually put on really, really good eye cream as well, because that's one of the first areas which is going to be um, a telltale sign for aging, because around here. The technique as well that a lot of people are using for um, on Instagram or just generally on themselves that actually ages you. So I'm gonna like touch upon how to apply like the eye. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> any so product a big one to avoid that crepiness that happens because it's the, the crepiness around, around the eye. Yes. And also the um, Nazio label lines, the ones that come straight from here to here. That is one of these two areas are literally what gave my age that's where i started noticing my aging was here and here um make sure first of all 
really, really good eye creams, looking for eye creams that have collagen inside them. Um, as you can see, hyaluronic things that are literally going to plump up the eye area because if your eye area is not well hydrated, then you're going to have a problem when you're applying any products on there. Um, I also love using um, the eye patches as well. You can get like the gold eye patches, those really hydrate with the snail, with the snail secretion under the eyes first. Once you've layered up all of your products, I'll start now with the makeup. Well, which ingredients should we, I mean, which ingredients are the ones making the real difference? So I heard hyaluronic acid, which is plumping, but I think one of the things that a lot of us think about is like the dark lines and it's almost covering yeah. up the bits that skincare isn't really looking after. So, um, yeah. Ingredients like um, vitamin C, vitamin C is brightening, but you have to make sure that it's a stable version of vitamin C, that it's not going to start reacting. Um, so Make, having products that are already pre-mixed as opposed to um, putting in the vitamin C yourself into products because you can buy vitamin C serums. Um, so you want eye creams that have hyaluronic acid, um, repairing creams, collagen is very, very um, important as well. I love this, this particular product is a collagen um, eye cream and that's really nice for like the daytime, but that works for me. I'm just recommending for other people, find what you actually need. For the dark areas, the vitamin C helps. Um, also, you want to look at, there are products for under the eye brightening that have um, some retinol and different And you just asked, like what's it. the eye cream called? Oh, um, yeah, ceramides as well. The ceramides are really good. This one is the Moistful Collagen by Etude. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And the snail as well, snail repair. There's a lot of products that have the black snail secretion in it too. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So kind of finding out what you really want is very important. But make sure you really plump up that eye area underneath first before you start doing any um, makeup in the area. Now, when you're looking at putting on your bases, as I said, there is a whole host of different options that you can choose depending on what your final um, look is going to be. If you want a matte look, then you're going to need to build up your products that's going to help control the oils without blocking the pores. Um, there are a lot of um, primers. Primers are basically used to prime the skin to get it ready to hold the makeup in place. That's what the primer does, is it holds the makeup in place. Whereas the mattifier mats down and controls the oils. So a lot of people use products and they're like, oh, my makeup is not staying on for a long time. Did you use a primer or did you just use a mattifying product? A lot of the time um, people, sorry guys, hold on, I'm just, having to like reach over for those products instead. Products like MAC has the whole um, prep and prime range. So it's prepping and priming the skin. Okay. Um, you've got the um, Fenty Beauty also has their primer as well. But that's more of a lotion-y kind of um, product. So you have lots of different textures where your primer can either be creamy your primer can either be more of like a silicone-y kind of base. Your primer can be quite watery based as well. Or it could be a very, very thick cream, which is going to literally make your face feel like this. Like, and that suck it all into place because it's going to like lynch, latch, sorry, onto all of the makeup and try and like hold it. But that's just the primer because you're still going to need to set it afterwards on the other end. But we'll get to that in a minute. But understanding your skin type, if you have dry skin, you do not want to be using anything that is mattifying. If you have um, oily skin, you do not want anything that is going to leave you looking. It's, you don't want anything that is like a dewy finish because you want to control those oils, right? And you also want to try and avoid things that have like the um, glitters inside them. There's a lot of products that um, MAC in particular has one of the sprays and it's got like a gold glitter 
inside it, you're going to want to stay away from that if you don't want a glowing look. If you want to look matte, you want to try and get products that are going to matte you down. Now, this is like this is by Makeup International. It's one of the really good mattifiers. You can use this underneath, and you can use it um, on top. Now, obviously, well, a lot. Can of you say the name because we can't really read it. Oh, it's by Makeup International. Yeah, and it's called Super Shine Super Matte Anti Shine. Now, you're not really going to find this in boots or in a lot of just the high street, but if you search for it, you can buy it in London. It's really, really good as a um, super matte finish. Someone's just asked about Smashbox Primer. Is that any good? The Smashbox Primer, I do like that, but again, that, that is a silicone-based one too. So some people find that the silicone-based um, products, they kind of slip and slide on their skin. So depending on what foundation you're going to put on top of the silicone as well is, um, sorry, I'm just looking at one of the questions. A lot of the time, silicone-based primers, foundations can start separating on top of them if they have oils, if you're putting oil on top of the silicone. Or it's am I talking nonsense? Or is that okay? Not for me if that's okay. <laughs> oh, a lot of people go with the silicone primers, but sometimes you find that the foundations don't set right on top of the silicone primers because if the foundation has a high oil content, the silicone and the oil doesn't sit on top of each other. So a lot of, so if you want to use a silicone primer, then try using like the oil-free, um, oil-free foundations are a better match for the silicone primers. Um, the creamy base primers, like the hydrating, this specifically says hydrating. This is a KVD. You can buy this in boots. KVD is now in boots. This is a creamy primer. And it's very similar to the um, to the Fenty Beauty as well. As you can see a little bit goes a very long way. And this is a hydrating primer. So these are really good, especially if you're going to use a full coverage foundation, um, because sometimes the full coverage foundations are so heavy that they end up really leaving you very very caked up. So you want to try and use like a hydrating moisturizer underneath that. So brands like Huda Beauty and Fenty and KVD, Kat Von D, but they're now just called KVD, not KVD, yeah. K, Kilo Victor, Delta. <laughs> um, you'll find that a lot of brands sell complementing primers with the foundations. And that's because of the different formulations. So when um, Huda Beauty came out when Fenty Beauty came out. Their first foundations were very, very heavy, full coverage, very matte, full like, like that, just flat on the face. And so you'll find that both of their products, their primers were actually very hydrating, creamy primers because it was trying to put some things back into the skin so that they didn't look so flat. Now that they've also got different foundation types, um, which are not as matte, like I don't know if you guys saw the Huda Beauty, that one was very, very, very matte, super matte. Those are good for people that have very oily skins that want that very matte effect. But if you have drying skin, if you're getting a bit older, Products like that will literally leave you looking really, really dry, really, really matte, really, really flat. You'll end up looking like you've got a mask if you apply it really heavily. So unless you want that full face, then if you use a really heavy product, you're going to want to try and water it down in your technique, the way that you apply it. And I'll show you guys different tools that you can apply your foundations with yeah a tinted moisturizer so i'm gonna i know i ramble on so i'm gonna run through some different types of foundations so that you guys can see yeah um you can have full coverage sorry foundation. please can i just ask a quick question before foundation because one of the yeah. ones so i get primer and it's kind of trying to build up your base because you know i'm sure most people here have had the basic 
um, tutorial on how to how, how to build up your makeup. So it's usually primer and mm -hmm. then where does concealer, color corrector and all of that good stuff. Perhaps what's in a daily, something easily manageable, like you said, right? If I'm putting on, trying to just get my base right as my part of my day routine, what would you say is the... What I'm going to do, I'm going to do half, half so that you guys can kind of see as I'm building up, I'm talking, I'm going to start applying so that you guys can see different finishes because talking is just long sum and stuff. So on one side, I'm going to put like a mattifier because you guys can see there's a lot of shine. So I'm going to mattify, I'm going to use a mattifying primer on one side. So your first stage is to use a mattifier and immediately as I'm putting this on, I can feel my skin is getting really tight it's almost like i'm putting some kind of glue oh, it's like really difficult to <laughs> to blend that in and when you're applying products you always want to apply it upwards never drag your face down but it's like really working that into the skin so can you see like that side still shiny but this side is yeah this side is matte now. Can you see like the difference between there and there? Yeah. So that side is using a mattifier. And on this side, I'm going to use a hydrating primer. Now, it's still going to be dewy. But it's not going to be matte because it's not a mattifier, it's a hydrating primer. So this is going to make sure that if I'm using a full coverage foundation, that it's not going to end up being flat on my skin. So that is the hydrating and that is the mattifying. Now, after you put on your primer, whether it's a hydrating primer or if it's a mattifying, you also have oils as well, by the way. Sorry, this one is a specific um, primer oil. It's by Makeup Obsession. You can buy that in Boots Obsession. And that's a baking primer because a lot of people have gotten into the whole baking skin, you know, leaving the powder on really long time. And what that does is it sucks up all the, um, it's like leaving powder on top of an area to suck up all the oils, but it ends up, showing every single line that you have that's on your face is going to come out. So people have products such as baking primers, which is basically an oil, which is going to stop the skin from looking too dry. You also have products like Milk Makeup Blur Stick, which is literally, it's literally a stick which I'm going to put on this side, even though I know I was using it on the hydrating side, I'm going to take it on this shine. This is a blurring stick, which you can use on a day-to-day -day basis if you don't want to, if you don't want to use a lot of makeup and you just want to blur your pores out or to give you like a quick, final, a quick final finish. You guys are having so much fun inside there in the conversation. Yeah, every time it's on your job. <laughs> <laughs> Did I see somebody say Pat McGrath? I'm supposed to be here listening to Lala working. Let's Please, leave, uh, let's leave on. concentrate, oh, concentrate. Lala, I'm sorry. Don't mind the return. She's useless. Thank you. I will, I will ban you people from any next event. So, milk makeup. This is a blurring stick, and you can literally just rub it directly onto any areas that you have shine. Because you don't always want to use makeup. Sometimes if you just want to run out of the house without wearing a lot of makeup, you can use a blurring stick and a, and a loose powder and you're good to go if you don't have anything that you want to conceal. If you just want to have a good final finish and you don't want too much stress, you can put on something light, put on a um, loose powder, silicone based powder as opposed to talc. You don't want to use talc because talc will blur, um, blurring stick. You don't want to use any powders that have talc inside them because they will clog your pores. So a lot of the silicone based 
base um, powders are really good because they just blur and soften the skin without giving it any heavy weight. So, are there any mineral based powders that you would recommend for those of us who are not fans of silicone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mineral based powders, um, obviously, there's lots of natural brands out there that are mineral based, but I, I do love mineralized. It's not a loose powder, but you can use it with a big brush if you just want to um, dust it on as well. But I go, I work a lot of the time with HD powders because I want to make sure that the skin is blurred and softened. What was the acronym you used? HD, which is oh, yeah, yeah, got you. So I work with a lot of the loose powders. So you'll see a lot of powders which are setting powders as opposed to pressed powders. You can see baking powders loose powders, setting powders, all these different names. Um, yeah, banana powder, um, the Ben Nye. I don't think that the Ben Nye has talc, hold on. Let's see. Yeah, it does have talc. Number one, number one ingredient on Ben Nye powder is talc. Um, but that's a nice translucent powder just for setting. A lot of people were like banana powder, banana powder, banana powder, but it didn't suit them because it wasn't the right undertone color for them whereas there's a whole range but this was this I always recommend Ben my more for film and TV as opposed to personal use I always say a lot of the time there's products that people use that were not really meant to be used on like individuals on your everyday basis so after you've done your my face is really tight oh, on this slide <laughs> after you've done your primaries um, the next level is concealer. A lot of people have moved away from the traditional use of concealers because of how people use concealers nowadays to do the whole highlighting and contouring. Everybody just uses concealers to do their highlighting. But concealers were originally obviously created to conceal. They're there to conceal, to conceal things that you don't want to be seen. So if you're using a concealer, what are you concealing? That's the first question. Okay. Um, there's lots of different formulas of concealers, whether it's liquid concealer, cream concealer. Um, if you are trying to conceal a spot, if the concealer, um, if the spot that you're trying to conceal is red, as in it's still a live spot, you can go with what we call correctors. I'm sure like you guys have seen them, you know, growing up especially, um, you used to always see like these color wheels. You used to see a lot of the color wheels, which would have different colors inside them. This is like one of, this is my professional palette, but they'd have different colors inside them. And they have the different colors because they're basically like correcting different things. So if you have dark spots, like if you have scars on your face, before you go in with your foundations and things like that, sometimes you might wear your foundation and you're still seeing the scarring coming underneath. If you use like an orange toned shade, the orange tone helps to cover over any dark areas first. So if you put that on first, on top of the dark spot, blend it in a little bit before you put on your foundation, that will help to cover over the scarring a lot more. If you have a live spot, which has, um, you don't have to be a makeup artist at all. You can buy them for home use. And that's what I mean about just getting the right little ingredients you need. Even um, LA Girls, you can buy the orange from the LA Girl Cosmetics um, in just even like your normal Burnt Oak or Finsbury Park or wherever. They're like $1.99. Their orange concealer is really good to apply it first on top of a spot before putting your um, foundation on. I'm if you have... just checking us on time. Sorry, I'm just interjecting quickly. Oh, I'm wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my spin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how are people um, fixed? Because it would be good to just, we try and keep it to one hour, but this is interesting. Stuff. And we're only getting into the juicy parts. Of... I just told that. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, are people comfortable with just hanging around for probably another 15 or so minutes so that we can go through the final stages of this guys want to put up yeah, yes good good we just leave to be honest it's recorded 
So you can catch up on anything you've missed if you have to go. Yeah. Okay. So, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys. So yeah, the green will help to conceal if you've got like a bright red spot on your face and you just want to keep on putting foundation. I mean, on top of that, you're never going to conceal it. You're just going to end up like making the area look more prominent by adding lots more foundation on top of the live spot. So put a green color corrector on top of a red spot that will like cancel out the redness. Putting orange on top of a dark area will help to cover over the spot. And by oh doing- Oh my God, I feel like we need notes on this. Please just go over that again. Cause I'm going to run a transcript. So I'm going to share okay. this content. So green over, cause I never get this. <laughs> green on top of red. So if you have a red spot, rather than trying to put on lots of foundation, because you're like, oh my gosh, I have a spot, let me try and cover that over. All you end up doing is piling up more and more and it makes it more visible. So if you put a little bit of a green concealer, that will take out the redness so that when you put the foundation on, it will give it a better coverage. If you have scarring, if you put an orange concealer on top of that, before you put your foundation on, that will help to conceal the scarring first. When you are, um, when you are using a concealer on top of an area, you can either use a concealer underneath or you can use a concealer on top of your foundation. Now, the main purpose of the concealer when they first started was just to help to conceal over spots. And then you also had YSL Touche Clat, which they used to use underneath the eyes. And it was a really big deal when it first came out. Touche Clat, Touche Clat. You just with the pen, put it on underneath the eyes. Your eyes look much wider and fresher and awake. And everybody thought it was amazing. Fast forward 20, 30 years, and everybody is now doing panda eyes with this concealer that's now like coming all the way down to their mouth like this, instead of just literally underneath there to make their faces look brighter. So if you want to just give yourself a quick little fresh to make you look a little bit more open, wide-eyed, um, fresher, slimmer, younger, all of that. Yes, putting a concealer underneath the eye area there helps, but you don't wanna layer it up too heavy because as I said, that's the areas that can start giving us away immediately because all the products start sinking into the line. So if you are gonna be applying um, concealers underneath, you wanna try and keep it light. You can put, you can literally, if you want to, and you don't want to have a full face of makeup, you can just put concealer on the areas that you need concealing, either liquid concealer, um, cream concealers, you know, heavy concealers, but just be aware that when you actually use these products, you're going to want to really blend them in directly into your skin. And do not take them past the eye socket area. If you're only doing it to give yourself a fresher, more wide awake look, it doesn't need to come up all the way underneath the eye socket there. Only apply it literally here and then blend it in so that it's not looking too heavy underneath the eye. Then if you just dot dot on any areas you wanna cover, you can go straight in with a loose powder. A lot of different brands have either colored powders or translucent powders. Laura Mercer has the universal powder. I'm gonna be honest, I do not recommend this for people my tone and darker. Let me be honest, because they're not here and they're not paying me. That's why they have- that I use it. <laughs> I like now, it. They, have a set, they have a second version. Instead of the clear universal, they have the dark, the universal dark, I think it's called. They have another one, because they realize that this, a lot of the powders which are universal clear, they have really bad flashback. Um, the NARS clear one as well is really bad. So a lot of the translucent ones, I recommend if you want to put it on, if you want to use this, use this, but you can also just, you know, dust in a little bit of a pressed, if you have a pressed powder, use this to dust it on, but also put on a little bit of your pressed powder on your brush just to help regain some color into there because I find that these are really bad um, with flashback cameras. You look great now and then somebody takes a picture with you and you're just like, ah, like that instead, not the best. Whereas, you know, brands like Huda Beauty, brands like Fenty Beauty, they have a wide range of the um, pressed powders. So you can use those as the setting powders directly onto the skin 
without foundations because sometimes we don't need the full coverage we just want a finished look to take away the oils if you're just running out if you do want to use your foundations understand what foundation you're using for the purpose Dior has an amazing backstage. Now this is like a really, <laughs> this is a really nice lightweight finish for an everyday, what do you want? <laughs> it's, the fa it's a face and body foundation. It's the backstage, it's lightweight. That's gonna give you like a sheer coverage, but it's buildable, it's medium, but buildable coverage. So buildable coverage products are really nice because you can control how much you want to apply one layer on do i want another layer okay i'll build it up whereas full face products full coverage products you're going to put these on and it's going to be difficult if you put too much on it's like you're now working against the tide to try and thin it out so if you do want a full coverage because a lot of people think oh full coverage it's going to help me cover over all my um all the scars or it's going to give me like a real full-on look you can actually get more of a full coverage by just changing the product the way the brush that you're using to apply a product if you applied a i love this product this is mac longwear pro a lot of people use the um mac studio fix mac studio tech anything like that the pro longwear is a water-based foundation. So that's gonna give you some hydration, but also give you coverage too. But you have to make sure you kind of shake it because the water in it separates. So if you shake it and you apply it on, you can get either a lighter coverage or a heavier coverage, depending on what brush you use. If you use brushes that are really densely packed, a brush like this, which is really densely packed, if you apply even the lightest of foundations with a brush like this, and you're pushing it into the skin like this, you're going to get a heavier coverage than if you are using a brush like this, which is like a stippling brush. These are really good for liquid foundations. It's like the painter's stippling brush. When you use a brush like this, mix and blend and work that over the skin that's going to help to thin out the product that's going to give you a lighter finish because that's just going to really blend it in if you're using a foundation brush like this the traditional well not traditional but these ones have been around a bit longer than some of the other brushes the foundation brush if you're putting on a foundation brush you can sometimes get streaks with the foundation brush which makes it difficult a lot of people complain that they do this and they end up getting streaks with their foundations if they're using cream or liquid so rather than applying with a foundation brush in the long strokes like this you can actually pat it in to get rid of some of the lines that are left behind with the foundation brush and then of course the beauty blenders which a lot of people love using beauty blenders you have to make sure that you really drench this it needs to be really really drenched it shouldn't be hard it should be very wet squeeze out all the water from it and then if you're using a beauty blender this will automatically because of the water that you've used to um, make this beauty blender puff up that is going to thin down a lot of the products that you're using so if you have a full coverage foundation but you use a beauty blender, it's gonna thin it out. It's gonna make it more sheer. And so as you're blending it in, a lot of people are like, oh, it's like my makeup all disappeared because you use water. And if you're using a beauty blender and you have products that have silicone in it, that's also gonna make the product start slipping and sliding because the water in your beauty blender, the silicone inside the um, primer, and the, it's like everything mixes together. I'm just talking about myself. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's so interesting. I'm so engrossed and I hope you guys like are finding it interesting. So please, as you touch on this, right? So I like that you were going through the brushes and the tools because it's what everyone looks at. Um, you also tell us, I find it a nightmare, cleanliness and health, you know, as we talk through managing that whole skis, especially for black people. What's the, yeah, please explain. <laughs> we need to make sure you're cleaning your brushes. Like a lot of people, um, use the same brushes over and over and over again 
and that can really cause a lot of breakouts um, on the skin. It, as difficult as it is, you do need to wash your brushes. Depends on depends on how often you're using them and also where you're keeping them. I do prefer to keep my brushes once they're clean. I keep them inside a bag that is um, that is airtight as opposed to you can leave them out to dry, but just keeping them on the side on your table like that, you're leaving your brushes open to bacteria in the air. Um, and also you want to try and clean the brushes at least once a week. It would be better to use them after every use, but I know what people are like, they're not going to. So at least once a week, clean out your brushes. Do you recommend that MAC cleansing thing? I know I got it because I just found it <laughs> easiest. After using it, I just wet a, wet a cloth and just wipe it off and at least I know I get some time in. Is that good? <laughs> you can use face washes. You can use um, antibacterial. You basically want to like clean the bacteria. I also have um, a homemade spray which has um, alcohol, tea tree oil as well mixed inside it to spray onto my brushes to clean them. Um, another th quick thing I was going to say, I saw the cover effects. Cover effects is really good for um, adjusting your foundations, but also for creating your own BB. You can get pure pigment, which, um, if you add that into going back to the, the sun cream I was talking about or mixing it in with a primer, basically a BB cream is just a mixture of a primer, a moisturizer and a color. So you can do that yourself at home and you can control if you just want something really easy and quick, sheer coverage without um, too much fuss and drama. If you have a little bit of your foundation or a little bit of a pigment like this, you can just mix this one drop in with it's really very concentrated you can just mix in one drop with a cream the sun cream i like to mix in the sun cream to make sure i've got my sun cream in there and a bit of the primer to hold it in and that's your three-part mixture you just mix that in together and you've got your own lighter weight you remind us what's that cover fx product this is a pure pigment so you can use this because a lot of the times people can't find foundations to match them perfectly um so you can buy your own pigments which you can mix into any other foundation to adjust the color or to make it thicker like if you have a very sheer foundation and you want to make it slightly heavier coverage, you can just add one drop of this into it and that makes it a heavier coverage. That's really interesting. Thank you. There's, there's so much chat. Okay, I think someone asked, you said leave the brush laying down when you clean it, is that right? Um, no, we want to leave the brushes standing up inside to, to air dry. But after they finish air drying, I don't keep my brushes just out on the side. Oh, you want to keep them up? Doesn't the water seep into the wood and then, okay, down that way, that's what I thought. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because that's what a lot of the time, that's what happens, that's why your ferrules end up, that's why your brushes end up breaking off because water has gone into, so you want it to dry out like that. So you can get brush holders to keep them like that. I do sometimes lay them down if I don't have um, anything, but I do have a brush tree, but you can lay them down flat as well onto a towel. But then once they are dry, then you do want to like keep them away inside. Uh, you can get like little makeup um, brush bags. Yeah, I'm sorry for overwhelming everyone with data. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I think you, you've been absolutely fine. I think it's probably more the chat, right? There's a lot to be said there. But it's good. I, 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 Anu asked, I will share the chat because I think there's a lot of good, good stuff that's going on. But Lola, continue, please. So we went on to mixing foundation. And now what about setting? Right. So I'm going to just really quickly um, be doing this. So with the setting, now a lot, a lot of the time, the final look, comes down to the powders that you're using to set because that's where some of the cakiness can come in. So even if you're using a pressed powder, use a pressed powder with a big brush, first of all. A lot of people think the powder brush is, oh, big powder brush, but if you're using this, the powder kind of goes everywhere. 
I prefer to use um, smaller, more specific powder brushes. Why are you fighting? I prefer to use smaller size brushes to get into specific areas. So if I'm applying, you don't always need to put the powder everywhere. If you just want to take down the shine in the areas with the loose powder or the pressed powder, you can just press down where you need to get rid of the powder. Things like this can, like, it can also shift the makeup around. So this is great if you're putting just powder onto direct bare skin on top of maybe just your um, primer that you're taking down the shine, you can put the big fluffy brushes. But when you have products on and you just want to take down the shine in your shiny areas that still look dewy, you can just mat down the powder into the specific areas, or you can use a slightly bigger brush and also apply that onto the areas that you need around. But don't go in and be like scattering it around, pressing it down to actually push and to keep the oils in bay is really a better way of setting your product. Using loose powders, I always recommend, a lot of people hate loose powders because they feel that it's just messy, but if you don't want to use a loose powder, which are great because the actual powder is a lot finer than the pressed powders, but if you have a pressed powder in a compact, use a big brush to actually set the makeup and then carry the pressed powder around with you for touch-ups instead. But I wouldn't go straight in because a lot of the time, um, when you're setting your powder, how many people has it happened to that the puff that comes inside the powder ends up getting, um, the puff itself starts going crusty and dry and you're seeing all the oils and everything that's in there, you know, so that's the reason why because you shouldn't be putting it directly onto the wet foundation because it's going to end up soaking up all the oils. Um, you can also, another trick is using the traditional cream um, blushes as well. Cream blushes are a great way of giving yourself a little bit of a glow without it looking too flat and cakey. If you're putting the cream blusher on, you don't want to put it on top of um, powder. But if you put that directly onto the skin, like again, if you're trying to look natural and you're just putting um, concealer onto the areas that you want to conceal and you're putting a little bit of powder on, you can also then work in the cream blusher into the areas onto your skin to give yourself a bit of a glow. You also have the jellies as well, like the jelly. Um, <laughs> these are like the, um, let me just take some out. There are lots of alternatives to blushes because I find a lot of people get a bit scared, blushes and bronzers. People get, can get scared coming in with them and looking too heavy. So these are the, Give, give us some brand names. Who does jellies? I've never heard of oh, look, you can even find them. In, you can find them in Boots. Um, this one is a Zoeva one, but you can get, I know Maybelline, I think Maybelline has like jelly versions. So you can just like rub them into the skin for a nice glow on the areas that you want to glow in without it looking too heavy when you're using powders. <laughs> Whilst you're looking for that, someone asks, are primers actually necessary? If you want your makeup to last, um, I would say you can use a primer, but primers are not necessary. I went for years without using a primer, but it depends on how long you want your makeup to last, and it depends on what effect you want. I only really started using primers when I started using heavy makeup, when I started using full faces of makeup full coverage foundations. If I'm doing a, um, if I'm using something like the Dior, I don't necessarily need to use a primer because um, I still want to look natural. I'm still going for a glow. I don't need anything too heavy. But if I want the look to stay all day, I'm going to use a primer and I'm going to use a good setting spray as well. Speaking of setting spray, um, there's lots of different versions of the setting sprays that you can use. I really recommend getting, nowadays Revolution has a whole range of different products. This is actually a hyaluronic essence spray. And these are great ways of refreshing your makeup through the day, um, along with the Fix Plus. I spray these on through the day just to refresh the makeup. If you're wearing your makeup, instead of going in and trying to pat, pat, pat down with 
powder on top of oils that are coming through if you just refresh your skin with a spray you can get smaller travel sizes as well that you can spray onto your skin those will help to refresh your makeup without actually adding extra layers of coverage of powder on top and keep you looking fresh but if you actually want to set your makeup so that it doesn't um, move anywhere then like fix makeup um, really really strong makeup setting sprays those can actually help you to have your makeup on all day any questions this is so good. I'm, I'm trying to keep up. Okay, so Ngozi had asked one earlier about cleansing. Just if we can spend some time taking off makeup and doing it effectively. Doing it effectively. Um, there are some amazing cleansing balms, um, like the, um, you can get some solid balms that you can rub into your skin and they melt upon the surface and they take it off. I used to use um wipes all the time i always did like a triple cleanse oh i did a triple cleanse all the time because i would first of all use wipes to take off the makeup then i would use a cleanser and then i would go in again with a cleanser but now i think that's how we even met talking about wipes <laughs> I, know, I, know. <laughs> I, realized, I realized how terrible wipes were for the uh, for the environment but as a makeup artist, I use wipes all the time for every, everything. Wiping my hands, wiping my brushes, wiping, wiping, wiping. And I would use them on my face. So luckily now, I found out that your wipes are biodegradable. Yeah, and <laughs> the bit I keep saying is, look, wipes became so popular because they're convenient. They have a place in the world. And I said, okay, I think for good skincare, we had a long session on cleansing and really like, it's the most important step, I think, in skincare, right? And getting that right. But there are moments when you're not next to a sink and you're not, and I saw all the nonsense that was being put into wipes and I was like, we can make it better. And so <laughs> that, was, that was my goal. I was like, we can make it better and what's the best we can do? Get it, actually. I want something like a flannel combining like a face, a facial and a body towelette yeah. in one. So it's a, it's a slightly different offering. It's not, I wouldn't say use that as your cleansing. <laughs> um, I do, I do really like um, the Melissa waters. Yeah. And I also really like um, the makeup wipes, um, like the makeup erasers. I was a bit cynical at first about them, but yeah, the original makeup eraser can be a bit pricey. So I have found that um, there are some cheaper imitations, even in the Poundland, I bought three in one, um, three, three wipes, three flannels in one pack. So that's great for me because I can just keep um, washing them as I go along. And they do literally take off even the heaviest full face okay. of makeup with the eyes. But then after you've taken off your makeup, you do still then need to cleanse, 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 because I do the white towel test. After I have taken off my makeup, after I have washed my face, after I have used the cleanser, I then use a white towel and I check to see if there's any makeup still on my face before I go into my night skincare. I like that. I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I, I'm obsessive with oils first, right? Because it's that attraction force is that like attracts like. So I yeah. feel like the oil goes in to pull out everything before you then go into the cleansing and cleansing. I think from the last session, we learned of the importance of cleansers with exfoliation. So you get that extra yeah. sort of skincare boost, but absolutely fantastic. So let's, let's see, let's see. What other questions have we had? So we're approaching, we should, we're going to wrap up or at half past. Wrap up now. Um, so, <laughs> no, 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 we're going to wrap up at half past, but I want to see that we've picked up most of the questions that I had. Um, that I had seen from earlier. Guys, if there's anything that's still on your mind, multitaskers, because the truth is, look, I'm a big fan of just keeping things easy. So what would be your sort of top most ride or die multitasking products that you carry around with you, <laughs> makeup wise? Makeup wise, um, yeah. I, I literally carry around these. I even, I even depot them into smaller sprays because through the day, whenever I'm feeling tired, I use this as part of my skincare as I'm layering in between essences. 
I use the sprays, the niamicide sprays. I put this on um, after I have done my foundation, before I put on my powder, I put that on to hydrate more. I carry it around with me so that through the day, if I'm starting to look tired or the lines and the cracks are coming through, I spray my face with that. So I find carrying like a little spray around a rehydration spray is really um, important. MAC has small travel sizes of their fixed plus if you want. Um, I tend to go with foundations that I can layer up so that I can either have a very sheer finish or a bit heavier. And I'm more likely to use those, the things like the, um, this one finishes off with a powder. It's a liquid to powder finish, the KVD. Who's there? Who's there? This is a KVD. Ah, right. It goes on, goes on as a liquid and it, um, it dries into like a powdery finish. But I'm more likely to go with those on a day-to-day -day basis than I am with a heavy coverage foundation because I find I can layer up those ones or use concealers to make the look more visible rather than trying to soften it out. It's a lot easier to do that. Um, I carry around with me um, a small powder as well because I actually use that sometimes just by itself the mineralize this is amazing i use this literally as five things <laughs> i use this as my bronzer i use this as um contouring i use this as eyeshadow sometimes because sometimes i'm running out and i'm just like i don't have time to start trying to put on lots of different eyeshadows so i use this as like a little bit of I love, I love that product. I think it's, 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 it's definitely my desert island makeup product. Dark deep. <laughs> that. Dark, dark deepest. I'm like, yes, just get that on. Get that on and put it on the eyes too. And great, you're done. It looks amazing. And I also, I also use my concealers as well. I like to get concealers that have um, applicators, though for applicators, because I can use that on to conceal an area, but I can also use that directly underneath my eyebrows because I don't have time to be running around to find another brush. I can use that directly underneath, even if I'm not putting any pencil in my brow, just to help to sharpen up underneath my brows and make them look neater. That's fantastic. I think that feels like a good place to pause, which is also a sad place because you kind of went to your brows and I was like, we're talking to a lash and brow expert right here. And we haven't even touched on that, but that's probably a whole different session. And it's a reason why people should follow you on Instagram too, because I think you share some of these nuggets quite often there. So it's, it's all good. Um, but no, thank you. So Anu's just asked, it's Lola Maja, right? It's Lola Maja. When you go on there right now, because of everything that's going on in Nigeria, you're going to see some very serious content. I will resume back to normal beauty content soon. But right now, um, if you go on there, you're going to see some quite serious content. So thank you, Oriton. <laughs> Good, correct. <laughs> that's, that's a friend who's got your back. Um, fabulous. But no, it's been so good, Lola. It's, I, I, you could see already from the questions that have come out. When it comes to makeup, I was like, oh gosh, 90 minutes for, the, for, for next time. But you've shared so many fantastic tips. Thank you so much for your time. Um, Thank you so much guys thank you for allowing me to ramble on no but really so so many knowledge bombs and thank you everyone who stayed through really appreciate it and i hope you guys got what you wanted if you have any more questions just share them with me personally we'll try and feed that back and i will if you're registered i will actually share the replay of the video and eventually when i get to it a transcript so a lot of the recommendations that lola made you'll be able to access too so on that note, I think this is it. It's the end of seven days of this, which has been fun. Um, you guys should follow. So it's LVB Skincare. Like I said, our whole skis is about really high performing, natural, vegan, multitasking skincare. It's more skin and mind. Um, and you'll see we have a collection of three products that I think um, Lola mentioned the balm and all the other things but if you sign up to our newsletter for me skincare is one aspect but really the whole concept of balance and introducing finding those moments to pause and look after our, be better look after ourselves is really important to me and I share a lot of content I'm passionate about through the newsletter so I would say lvbskin.com if you sign up on Sundays I share 
lots of my nuggets there and you can stay up to speed with that too. So thank you everyone. I'm going to bid you good night. It was lovely meeting you all. Banker, Oriton, Tiffany, <laughs> um, Julie, Fumi, thank you everybody and hopefully see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye Grace, Cordelia. I see everybody. Have a lovely Thank evening. you. Thank you Lola. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.